Hi, this is Chris from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. You mentioned Ali Velsi, and he's, you said he's absolutely correct. The silence of the GOP in the face of Trump's Hitler-esque language is deafening. It means complicity. I mean, it, it is just extraordinary watching Lindsey Graham say, what did he say? Oh, I don't care at all about language. No. You know, I just care. I'm like, really? Wow. Like, what? I just, Allison... What do they have on Lindsey Graham? I mean, it's got to... What have we said previously, Chris? There's got to be... It's not just little boys. It's little boys dressed in, like, uh, I don't know, Civil War, you know, Union soldiers. Right. and he's Union dressed, suits. Yeah, and he's dressed in, I'm going to say, Scar- Scarlett O'Hara. Actually, he probably stole your mom's costume out of the Smithsonian. And then he's, he's bent the, over, like, a fainting yeah. couch. Yeah. What? He's got the curtain Think, rod. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's the real crime against humanity. He stole the Carol Burnett costume. <laughs> and I don't know. Um, yeah, you said, uh, uh, you were saying I'm reminded tonight of something Miles Taylor mentioned in his book, that to, re- the, that to reduce the price of dissent in the GOP, we have to increase the supply. Econ 101, we need more Republican voices condemning authoritarianism. I mean, it really is extraordinary that we, it's only a handful, <laughs> right? You know, uh, of uh, I, and as you say, usually former officials we had olivia troy yesterday mm-hmm. i i mm-hmm. i mean i i like i say i don't it's it's not and like once i guess could be an accident but he keeps doing it mm-hmm. he keeps quoting hitler on purpose right oh a hundred yeah a hundred percent yeah to see it i mean that's what he does right it, he, he he said he himself said i could shoot somebody on fifth avenue and i wouldn't lose my voters and he you know he's right about that yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I said. If the Supreme Court rules for him, that means Joe Biden can shoot him on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. So, so there you go. Huh. You but said he doesn't, he doesn't even have to commit any crimes. Joe Biden just wouldn't have to leave office. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Judge Little pointed that out to us in his amicus brief. He's like, uh, uh, you, and nobody's looking at Article Two, Section One, Clause One of the Constitution that says your term is four years. If you grant him immunity, there's no more four year term. Biden won't have to leave office. Yeah. Cool, well, we're done. You quoted Trump lately, said we're going to win four more years in the White House. Then after that, we'll negotiate. Based on the way I was treated, we'll probably entitled to another four after that. And you said, so he'll be a dictator on day 1,460 as well. I mean, yeah, he (laughs) clearly he's saying he said that many times. Oh, because of the Trump Russia hoax, I'm entitled to a do over. I mean, I do you think what's in this binder is ever going to fully come to light? I mean, I, I, I obviously the only thing you can speculate is it absolutely confirms what he's been calling a hoax for however long. It's probably what they have of it has probably been reclassified because it shouldn't have been declassified in the first place. And because the president who occupies the Oval has, you know, say over what is classified and not not Donald Trump, despite what Cash Patel and John Solomon would like to think. Uh, so, no, I you know, this is highly classified information. I don't think we'll see it even even like. You know, we didn't get some of that Nixon underlying grand jury material until a year before Mueller uh, was done with his report. And that's 48 years old. Um, And that wasn't even classified. So, no, we're probably not going to know the full breadth and depth of what's in that binder. All I want for Christmas is a PP tape. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You said I still believe Trump will be a convicted felon before the election, perhaps before the GOP convention, that will not absolve us from voting. Um, yeah, we got to do all of the above. But, uh, you know, Allison, I asked um, Glenn Kirshner about, you know, just you because you deal with this all the time, just the complaining about how long this has taken and Merrick Garland, because, you know, and I, I was saying to Jody, I sort of sometimes fall between you and, <laughs> you know, Glenn Kirshner, because I get your points that he wasn't appointed to, until X and then he was, you know, blocked by Trump administration officials and that he was doing things before Jack Smith was, uh, you know, but but you, I know that you love, you know, Glenn Kirshner as well. And just the he, among many others, Ellie Mistal, as you know, you know, have a lot of impatience that now we're up against this deadline that we now we don't know what's going to happen right before the election because, of, you know, just the constraints of the court and the judicial system. Right. Yeah. I've never seen the deadline as an actual deadline because if Trump got in, if we indicted him two years ago and uh, and he was still delaying the trial and he got in somehow, he would pardon everybody anyhow. So, you know, it really the deadline isn't really the, a deadline in, in the minds of uh, in my mind. But yeah. but also we have to remember that just it, there's no end zone here. There's no 
touchdown. There's no spiking the ball if he gets convicted and goes to jail. Yeah, that's not the end of it. I mean, look at history. Look what happened to with with Adolf Hitler. Um, his conviction and jailing, and then everybody did their touchdown yeah. dance and then kind of had apathy. There, it's it's called eternal vigilance for a reason. We have to be eternally vigilant. Yeah. This autocracy is not going to go away. We have to keep voting. It will be this way forever. Uh, yeah. We can take the wins and have some champagne when it happens, yeah. but yeah. that's not the end of it. Speaking of 2016 flashbacks, real quick, though, we got to run, but Rudy Giuliani, you know, I was reminded someone talking about uh, he's engaged in election interference in every election, not just, you know, obviously trying to get dirt and, the, you know, the whole Ukrainian thing. But, oh, my God, I remember the New York FBI. He said it was Lars Larson, Chris, on his radio show. Yes. He said several active FBI agents have told me X, Y, Z, this whole thing that led to Comey and, you mm -hmm. know, having to d reopen the investigation and Hillary Clinton. That was, you know, and it's not dirty tricks. That is illegal election yeah. interference, yeah. right? I, I think so. Um, it would be very difficult to prove uh, because FBI agents disagree with prosecutors all the time. It, it was yeah. a, a, an FBI agent in the Washington field office <clears throat> named Dan Tuono who was responsible for putting off the opening of the January 6th uh, investigation at the FBI. I mean, we had the DOJ and Wyndham and everybody trying to get search warrants and execute uh, search warrants and seize phones. And Dan Tuono at the FBI is like, no, he also didn't want to do a, a search down at Mar-a-Lago. He stopped yeah. that from happening, and that's why only a subpoena went out. But that is common in the FBI um, for for agents and prosecutors to, yeah. to clash on, on going forward. But in this case, you know, Dan Tuono is a Trump holdover and a Jim Jordan pal. So that yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. me out a little bit. But how do you prove that? Oh, God. All right. I love you, Allison Gill, you woman. You industry. Goodbye. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> mm -mm, there it is. My first drink of the day. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Many of you know my, my story. I stopped drinking wine for three years during COVID, during the lockdown as part of a health reset. Now I drink wine in moderation, but this is an amazing new product. I've always believed in probiotics and Z-Biotics. Check this out. You drink just one of these. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. I am using this and I feel great in the morning. I don't have to worry if I have an extra glass of wine. I I still feel great in the morning. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. I've always had acid reflux problems. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. All I know is it works. It is Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Go to zbiotics.com/slash political voices or scan the QR code on the screen right now.